Hi guys, Freddy here with another Retro RPG. And while I'm having to schedule my time a lot better because I'm away from home a lot, I've been working my way through a backlog of games and doing the Retro RPG and the rules breakdown in the same week. And this week it's the turn of Unknown Armies. So I'll be covering that on the desktop in a wee second. But if you'd like to support the channel, or you'd like to see these videos a week early, then there's a Patreon link to in the description down below. If you click on that, you can see how you can help out and it'd be very much appreciated. Anyway, over to Unknown Armies. So, this is Unknown Armies by Atlas Games. It originally came out in 1998, but this is the second edition from 2002. And there's a third edition which came out in 2017. Now, first of all, I need to apologise to fans of Unknown Armies, because they're not going to like this review, because... I'm going to criticise some areas, merely because I don't get Unknown Armies. While I know there's a lot of good stuff in here, and I really do admire a number of things about the game, just from looking through it and reading up on it the last few days, I just don't quite get it. And perhaps there's really obvious answers to those things, but it's the problems with me. This game just isn't gelling with me as an idea. And it's maybe just because it's not a game for me. And some games aren't. But there's a lot to like in here. Let's not be afraid of that. It's from Greg Stolze and John Tynes. Both of which have done some, some fantastic work in the past. Stuff I've featured on the channel and been a big fan of. Uh, Greg Stolze has done the Yuzagi Jimbo role-playing game I covered some years ago. Absolutely fantastic stuff. John Tynes, lots of involvement in Delta Green, the Call of Cthulhu setting and now independent game, which is absolutely brilliant. Uh, take on taking Call of Cthulhu into the modern days in a completely different way to Cthulhu now. Fantastic stuff. And I know Armies is somewhat similar to that, but modern horror in a different way. Now, let's have a look at the back of the book first. Something big is going down. You don't know what, but you can feel it all around you. It's in the air. The headlines in the newspapers and the blurry images on television. It's a secret you have yet to grasp. Although the first syllable has been spoken in a dream you cannot quite recall. You need to know more. The world you know is not enough for you. You want to go deeper. At times, you want to let go of reality and let yourself slip into the delirium of pure understanding. Anything would be preferable to the ignorance of daily life. You know there is a place, defined by ideas if not by atoms, and it holds the key to your desires. But there is a danger there. People vanish, die horribly, become madmen for the sake of whatever the secret is that lies at the heart of the unseen world. That world is the occult underground. Find it before it finds you. Unknown Armies is a role-playing game of power and consequences. Second edition rulebook is reorganized and rewritten to better serve new players and build stronger campaigns. It includes new schools of magic, new avatars, and much more. So my first problem with it is if it's as set up on the back of the book, then I totally get it. It's a game of conspiracies. There are big players out there manipulating the world. And you start off as somebody who's had a minor glimpse into it. You saw something as a child, or you've viewed it as part of the grand conspiracy controlling the world. And you start investigating it, and your adventures are about uncovering all this. And as you go up in power levels, you can gain access to unknown magics and start to gain a bit of control over the world and then there's avatars at the top of it who are becoming on the way to godhood um there's a set number of them i think it's 333 and it's a one in one out but they basically control the world they have vast powers now cover i'm not a big fan of it's kind of grungy artwork um but it doesn't look that professional. Uh, but I'm not an artist, so I probably shouldn't criticise. But inside, I really like the style. Uh, grungy, scuffed up pages. Really, really cool design. Um, while still remaining very readable. It's all in black and white. There's no colour plates in here. We go through the table of contents. About the book. About the rules. Now, about the book splits up how the book's laid out. And how the game's laid out. 
because really there's three power levels the game's trying to sell at. And I totally understand if these flowed very well into one another, but it really seems to be set up that you play at one of these levels. So it almost seems like it's trying to be three games in one. That's one of the things I don't quite get. Which, perhaps if I read more, perhaps there's just some paragraph somewhere which would just make it click in my head. But we've got the secret names of streets. These are street level people. So ordinary mundanes. People who have glimpsed what's going on and are digging into the conspiracy. Uh, Fox Mulder out of the X-Files. You know, somebody just has that tiny glimpse into what's really happening. Then we've got book two, The World of Our Desires. That first one, sorry, is the street level campaign. Then we've got a global level campaign, The World of Our Desires. So basically your magic users in this one. It introduces magic and you have some of the power. And finally, there's the cosmic level campaign where you are vying to become one of the people controlling the world. Now, if these were power levels which flowed one into another, totally get that. But it really does seem to be setting out that these are separate things. That if you start as a mundane, if you're street level, then you're just going to get swatted by higher levels. You are just going to be forever digging around in the lowest level of the conspiracy to control the world. We've got about the rules. A very good, quick summary of how the rules work. And then we've got stories and stuff leading into it. Lots of handwritten notes really lending to the tone of people digging into it and decoding things. Uh, like you're part of deciphering the cults and looking into all the magic. We're onto the secret names of streets. So we're going through, there is an occult underground. We've got witnesses, people who know bits, what you hear. And these are the things that you hear on the streets, which might be true. I really like this. This uh, is so much conspiracy, um, World Weekly News, uh, what's the other one? The National Enquirer type stories. You know, Bigfoot has a social security number. The final scores of every year's Super Bowl are part of an ever-changing numerology formula that can start and stop wars. Um, in Memphis, there's a phantom Piggly Wiggly. In the... Uh, it's where local ghosts buy their groceries. Holiday inns are sentient beings tied in a large collective mind with their own agenda. People working in inns are just pawns. People sleeping in inns are sometimes walked in subtle ways, sometimes untouched. And these are the things which could be true. These are the rumours. I just love so many of these. They're crazy. They're really interesting. Seven colours in the rainbow. Seven chakras in the Sanskrit text. Seven varieties of Barbasol shaving cream. If you count the discontinued winter gel, winter green gel. Do I have to draw you a picture? Crazy stuff, a lot of fun. But trigger events, so things which activated your character. You know, you were eight year old and you slept over at a friend's house and witnessed something. Uh, 15th birthday, your parents gave you a puppy. Um, your grandfather was sitting on his porch and called you over. I ate her, he said. I had to. She had your grandmother's eyes. Your karate instructor has an unofficial requirement for black belt. Uh, you're in highway construction. You know, lots of really crazy ideas which give your character a glimpse into this world behind our world. There's, when you build up characters as well, you build them up into a group. So, Dot Gone. The members of your group were co-workers at a little dot com that went bust. Friends of Je Charlie v Verrick. A friend who was digging into the occult and died and everybody wants to carry on his task. Cabana Boys, the small resort town. Um, the big divide between the have and have nots. So you're digging into the deeply rotten stuff in the town. Occult investigators. You can be vigilantes, and it's setting up what your goals, your assets, your liabilities would be. And the examples for all of these. Who you are, your obsessions. So you have to set out what drives your characters. So that what they're obsessed by, what they're scared of. Uh, character sheets sort of dumped in randomly. I'm a big fan of putting character sheets at the back of the book where they're easily copied. I'm not a big fan of sticking them in here, but okay. Um, what else we got? Rage passions. What makes you angry? 
noble passion. What drives you to the good side of your personality? Then you've got your personalities itself. You know, zodiac personalities, pop culture personalities, including Kane from Kung Fu, um, Louise from Thelma and Louise, Professor Snape from Harry Potter, Obi-Wan Kenobi from Star Wars. Um, you've got your ratings for street level, global level and cosmic level. Walk we'll through the stats and attributes. There's not many. Um, the game is very much um, a little more freeform than your Dungeons and Dragons, than Shadowrun, etc. Although it's percentile based, so perhaps a bit more like Call of Cthulhu. And we're going through different skills here unskilled actions. You know, how to spend experience points, the usual rule stuff. Why no skills list? Um, why the weak skills? Explaining why. Six ways to stop a fight, and it goes through the combat system. How to dodge, how damage works. Special ammunition, hand-to-hand -hand damage. All the usual combat things, wounds and healing, how to heal yourself up. Car chases. Obviously a big part of any conspiracy is when the bad guy's getting away and you've got to chase after him. Um, some various things to think about which add to the variety within these. Stress checks. Getting crazy. As your stress levels get up, you go insane. It's not a straight sanity system like in Call of Cthulhu. You get uh, insanities based on different areas. So if you're getting hardened, if you're becoming a bit of a failure in your eyes, um, your guilt and self-loathing, what else was the isolation, helplessness, feelings of safety and all that. So you can pick up different insanities based on what is bothering you rather than just having a number which goes down and drives you insane. Yeah, we've got the playing the game chapter. Just going through the structure of it. And then we're on to the world of our desires. Welcome to the occult overground. Oh, underground, sorry. We've got more witnesses. Then we're on to magic, because at this level you are being able to manipulate the world through the magic and the arcane. And the magic is fairly interesting in the way it's powered. Um, so we've got the global campaign, building up your groups at a higher level. Basically repeating what's come before, but at the next level up. Then we're on to the magic section itself. We've got ritual magic. Sort of various standard spells. Major rituals. Creating proxies. I'm just trying to get on to the types of adepts. The schools of magic, the laws of magic. Because each type of magic you have an interest in. Have I just skipped into one? No, blast spells, formula spells. So, the group of magic that you belong to, um, that your adept belongs to, is grouped in these. So you have things like bibliomancers. They love books and they get their magic from there. But every group is kind of cursed that they have their interest, but they never really gain any benefit from it. They're constantly having to give it away. So, let me check my notes. Sorrows of Young Will. are different spells based on books. The Cleomancer. So people who manipulate history and stories. You now, you remember now. Familiar face. You now, when you cast a spell, pick one person you can see. The spell makes that pe person feel like he's met you somewhere. You know, it just manipulates you into their life. You know, Gnostic uh, gossip, urban legends. Then we've got the dipsomancer, booze hounds, people who change reality through alcohol. And their effects are, you know, 
Little whammy, party like hell, drunken stagger. Now I see. Just a harmless drunk. God looks out for drunks. You know, various magical effects based on you being drunk. Entropomancer. So, body bags, chaos mages. They've got nothing to lose. Everything has gone to shit. So, taste of chaos. Bulletproof Kuspa. Double or nothing. The Epidiromancer, flesh workers, so they manipulate their skin. So, regeneration, flesh is my servant, face shift. Mechanomancers, who create clockwork devices. So, they've got various things, they don't really have spells, they have more significant effects where they can create clockwork devices, which are magically powered. Narco alchemists, drug rats, narco psychonauts, who similar to the alcohol but more drug related, sulfurous fixation, aqua vitae, quicksilver, Mars dust, Venus's roof, the persona mancer, so a thespian, somebody who acts differently. I am not who I am, mask of the man, mask of the beast, mask of the god. Pluto mancers aka Warbucks Misers, people who manipulate reality through money. Um, so they've got abilities or spells based on riches, you know, fortune's wheel, bankrupt will, devaluation, I know your price, fiscal history. Then we've got Pornomancer, um, somebody who's into pornography and gains their magic through that. So they've got smooth move, mind and mouth go north and south. Dazzle, Psychotrauma, Synchronicity, Paralysis, Inner Torment. Urbanomancia, aka rats, who have powers to do with the city so they can become a face in the crowd. They've got streetwise. Break your mother's back alone in the crowd. Videomancers, people who get their powers through television. So they've got things like Film at Eleven, Dumbing It Down, Narrowcast, Edutainment. Mute. Reruns, watching the detectives. And then we've got the ability to make up more spells. Now what I was saying was, things like the Pornomancer want pornography, they want sex all the time, but they gain no benefit from it, they gain no pleasure. Um, people who gain their magic from money are spending it for their magic. So they lust after money, they want it, but they're forever losing it. And that's kind of balance of the game at the extreme level that when people have power when people have something they're constantly losing it so we've got the avatars we're up to the cosmic level campaign here and avatars are a type that your characters will try and become or people are trying to become like to gain their powers as i said there's only 333 of these in the world which control everything so, Executioner, the Flying Woman, the Fool, the Masterless Man, the Messenger, the Mother, the Most Valuable Player, the Mystic Hermaphrodite, Pilgrim, Savage. Lots of these with different personality traits and abilities that you gain. The True King, the Warrior. Book 3, The Living Mirror of Heaven. So, detailing out the Cosmic Campaign. The higher levels of it. You know, things that you hear. Again, it repeats everything over, but at the higher level. You know, assumption and ascension. Because you're trying to ascend to Godwalker level. We've got demons summoning them and controlling them and possessing them. We've got artifacts, really powerful magical items. And then finally, we've got the Games Masters chapters at the back here where it kind of lays everything out, setting up you know, what sleepers are. They were born in England during the witch hunting's history of the 1600s. The New Inquisition. I'll try and flick through this because I have been going on a while. We've got different sects here. Sect of the Naked Goddess. Mac Attacks. Just detailing out what they're like. Global Liberation Society. The Order of St. Cecil. Satan's Chosen Temple, we've got street level uh, Game Master characters, global level dukes, cosmic level lords. 
detailing what the campaigns should be like, you know, from one shots up to longer things. This is perhaps where I would have got the game more, you know, laying out your adventures and the relationships between characters. Just lots of really good games mastering hints, especially for an investigative character based game like this. Um, how to run the game, you know, how to do narration, get, run Games Master characters, your standard stuff. This is apparently far more based towards new role players than the original was. So it details things, you know, how to run a car chase, how to run magic, um, different spells, running madness, how to handle insanity within your games, impairment from alcohol and drugs, uppers and downers. We've got GM artifacts, so powerful magical items for the Games Master to use for his NPCs. Unnatural phenomena. So we've got the demons and the astral parasites, lycanthropes, golems, non-entities, revenants. Now there's lots of monsters in here, but these will all be getting manipulated themselves by the powers which control the world. You're not just out to fight a monster each week. The monsters, if you're fighting them, will be controlled as part of the conspiracy that you're trying to uncover and defeat eventually. Um, vampires, zombies, full range of monsters there, and then a scenario. So going through that. Uh, another one, Pippin Feathers, a slightly shorter one. And right through to getting towards the very end here, a guide to first edition source books telling you what they are and what content has been superseded. So what stuff you can use, and finally an index. So that is Unknown Armies. As I said, I don't quite get it, um, but I can see there's a whole load of interesting stuff here. Now it really does state on the cover here, the role-playing game of power and consequences. And that seems to be what it's about. But... I think perhaps I need taken by the hand a bit more to guide me through how you would format that. Uh, the Games Master in ca uh, section really is a bit brief for my liking and didn't handhold me as much as I felt I needed. Anyway, I wittered on for absolutely ages, so thank you very, very much for watching. But as always, most of all, you look after yourselves, and I'll catch you later. Bye now.